Hi, I'm Jeff Tallon and I work at Industrial Research uh, Limited, which is a government research laboratory. I'm also a professor of physics at Victoria University and my main area of research is in superconductivity. At the moment we're in the test hall of HTS 110, which is a company which was spun off by Industrial Research last year and its task is to commercialise high temperature superconductivity. Well, superconductivity is an almost magic-like uh, property that some materials have. If you cool them sufficiently, then below a critical temperature, they become perfect conductors of electricity. Now, when I say perfect, it is pretty well perfect. Uh, almost infinite conductivity, zero resistance. So this means that uh, such a material uh, loses no energy whatsoever when it conducts electricity. Now about 20 years ago I was uh, very fortunate uh, to be involved in the discovery of a number of new superconductors. We call them high temperature superconductors and that's because they operate at temperatures much higher than the old uh, superconductors that have been known for nearly a hundred years. Now these high temperature superconductors are actually brittle materials and what one wants to do is somehow make a flexible wire conductor out of a brittle material. And I'm going to illustrate uh, just how that is done. First of all, in the bottle here, I have some black powder. And this is the precursor powder uh, from which the superconductor is made. The powder is placed inside a tube, a silver tube, and then that silver tube is passed through a, what is called a draw plate. And that consists of a number of holes of decreasing diameter. So the, the tube is drawn through, first of all, the large hole and then increasingly smaller holes until one ends up with a wire which has a diameter about one millimeter in cross section. Now a number of those wires can then be bundled together and they can, the process can be repeated and they're passed through the draw plate uh, until that wire is drawn down to a small cross section. The very last step is that the wire is then rolled flat into a tape. So here's an example of a high temperature superconducting tape which has 90 filaments in its cross section. You can see that it's very flexible. Uh, it's only about a third of a millimetre in thickness about four millimetres wide. This is an example of what's known as a pancake coil. In fact, it's a double pancake coil, and it's wound from the superconducting tape uh, here to make a magnet coil. Here's a bigger example, uh, but this again is just the same. It's a double pancake uh, coil, uh, which is wound for generating a, a very intense magnetic field. Here in New Zealand we have uh, decided to primarily focus on uh, superconducting coils for magnets and motors and, and generators, uh, but some of our industrial partners abroad are targeting huge applications that are really extremely exciting. For example, American Superconductor Corporation in Massachusetts is in the middle of designing and building a 50,000 horsepower uh, motor for driving a ship. Now, if you think about the engines in QE2, this is one of the biggest ships around. Each of the two engines is 50,000 horsepower. And uh, so this is a huge application of uh, superconductivity. And the big driver here is that these motors are not only more efficient, but they are much, much smaller. They're about one sixth of the volume, one sixth of the weight of um, a conventional motor of the same power rating. Japan Rail at this very moment is testing a prototype rail system that uses superconductors to levitate the train off the track. This train has been already clocked at 586 kilometers per hour and these units are extremely efficient. They're about 10 times the efficiency of a jumbo jet uh, per passenger mile. Now I guess the really exciting thing is that Discoveries made in the laboratory here 18 years ago are now at the forefront of a number of uh, leading edge technologies around the world which are really extremely exciting in terms of their size and their impact that they will have on future sectors and technologies.